before we check out these new robotic waifus, y'all, you better be looking at them on the best emulator around, LD Player. LD Player 9 is now available with the smoothest gameplay, the most stable connection, and a ton of tailor-made features just for Epic 7. So while we respectfully review both Leica and Specialty Change Inos, please do yourself a favor and use the links in the description below as well as a pinned comment to start using the best emulator on the market. Thank you to LD for sponsoring us. Thank you guys for watching and being cool with these shoutouts. Without further ado, let's get into the video. What's going on, y'all, and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today, let's take a look at Architect Leica, Moonlight Leica, as well as a new Specialty Change Inos, Anos, however you guys want to say it, 2.0, uh, the new Specialty Change unit. And then I do want to talk with y'all briefly about the state of the game. Uh, but as always, the password for the gift box is zero defect, so go ahead and claim your gold, your leafs. And let's go ahead and take a look at our two new heroes. Okay, normally we take a look at the one-minute summary, but there's literally nothing on there besides a little bit of quality of life, um, they'll show like some banners, which a lot of them you can just get from the side story. So we'll just focus on the two new characters or the new ML5, the new specially changed. Let's start with Laika and real fast guys, we're not going to take too long in this as I just did a video recently, uh, as her skills were revealed before this first impression. We'll take a quick look. I'll give my overall take, but if you guys want extra in-depth, uh, info, go look at the other video, but yeah, let's Eliminating take a look here. Eliminating uncertainty and completing missions is my purpose. Check the volume. My raison d'etre. Ooh, I like her voice. Critical error I think this voice sounds good. Commencing total extermination. Yeah, like that little robotic Everything theme. Everything in its right place. Tasia Valenza. Architect Leica is an android sent from Policia to Terranor to assist with city planning and administration. Okay. While initially operating under the central division. Pause super fast, guys. The um, I do like the color palette. The black and pink looks really nice. But overall, never been a fan of Leica. And in general, both the splash art and the sprite itself. Um... I don't know. I think the sprite looks decent, but the, especially the splash art just looks kind of more like a reskin and not like a new ML5. Um, but that might just be me not liking Laika too much. Let me know how you guys like her, just appearance-wise, at least for now. System. She eventually broke we'll take a look at the gameplay control. in just a sec here. Been involved in a number of incidents the S3 the animation and the voiceover do sound cool, as though. An independent entity. As she developed a following among those dissatisfied with the city, the Central Division tasked all of their agents with apprehending her. Okay, pretty cool you can background learn more lore. about her story in Moonlight Theater by watching the first episode of Zero Defect City. That is kind of cool. There is a new Spism. Moonlight Theater. All right, here we go, guys. We'll Architect pause and Leica take it from here. Five star so as we saw already, right, uh, Mage Virgo, they change a few things in terms of the imprint uh, based on, like, the earlier leaks and whatever, all that stuff. But here's what we finally have, the final product, Light Mage. Um with attack imprint and effectiveness here 119 base speed remember that this currently is a speed buff if you play in an rta uh for the frenzy mechanics uh, but let's quickly go over the skills real fast i'll just give my quick take and then you guys let me know what you think about her overall i think a lot of y'all already shared with me on the other video but yeah like it like a skill two laying the groundwork uh three turn cooldown extra turn if you use 20 souls which is probably gonna be pretty important in her overall kit um she is a mage so you can just bring target hells uh for those 20 souls um, but we have that 100% uh, chance after Mola to dispel two buffs and inflict target for two turns. We grant immunity and then also a big, big combat readiness push as well, right? So a really cool skill too. Um, fairly powerful, right, with how much stuff it does, especially when you combine it with that soul burn. Let's go ahead and take a look at the animation here real fast. It's called laying the groundwork. Yeah, let's take a quick preview here. When 20 soul is consumed, grants an extra turn to the caster. Okay. Skill three. <laughs> Pretty fast, but yeah, let's just like her base uh, base form. Eliminate the target is the skill three, guys. Four turn cooldown, a lot of skill enhancement, um, damage dealt. When with everything going as planned, increases attack of the caster for two turns. So two turn attack up before, right, before she attacks, which is very important. When the target is not a leader boss monster, so unfortunately, guys, she won't be getting this uh, defense pen. Oh, excuse me, sorry. She'll be, she won't be getting the uh, damage share ignoring effects, which is whatever. The, it does seem like, though, like a lot of units just don't work for PvE anymore. I guess we don't need extra health for PvE, but it's a little disappointing uh, overall. But, um, yeah, she ignores damage sharing effects, so things like Escort, like Aureus, when the enemy is afflicted with target, penetrates the target's defense by 80%, um, which she gets target right from the skill 2. And then this is AoE, uh, all enemies hit. And then it has some speed scaling as well, right? Okay, so let's check the animation. It's fairly straightforward, but attack up, 80% defense pin. Uh, if they're inflicted with target, which you should have when you soul burn, straight skill 2, skill 3. Lots of damage dealt, lots of synergy between different units. Seems pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Let's look. Penetrates the target's defense by 80%. Animation, I think, looks pretty good damage overall. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's speed. Big old laser just rips through. 
this looks like a lot of damage in that uh you know in the video testing and then the skill one very underwhelming it's just this 20 percent combat readiness push it's whatever um i believe they showed her multis guys but i'm not a really big on the multis i prefer to see the character when it comes out um and you know just tested myself but let's just see here i mean her health's already Caster really low 20 percent so I did 3,300 to a Eula, which, you know, has a lot of mid uh, a lot of defense, but still. So 3,300, just uh, first glance. We don't really take too much stock into that, but 20% combat rating is push. Okay. Uh, and here's her idle animation. Once again, I don't, I'm not super impressed with the sprite. Um, she's not my kind of character. So let me know if you guys are excited overall. So Mage, right, she kind of has an all-inclusive kit. Where she brings a soul, she brings, excuse me, a Taga Hells, Soul Burns, extra turn, right? Grants the target on a unit that you want, and then she'll obliterate the entire team, especially the unit that she targets after stripping, combat readiness push, extra turn, all that good stuff. Big, big damage. Um, if you watch the other video, I do some comparisons to units like Strays. Um, so I don't think she's necessarily like a must pull, but I know players are probably that love making like new comps and new like interesting mechanics. Maybe they're going to combine her with a recently released Elgos, things like that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of fun interactions. People that like that very fast, high damage, kill your opponent before they respond kind of style, I think we'll have a lot of fun with her. Uh, but overall, for everyone else, I don't think she brings anything like majorly unique to the table. I'm sure she will be decent enough to maybe pretty good. But overall, if I was cleaving, I don't think I, I don't know if I would spend 10,000 Mystics on her unless I like Laika as well. Like not just her, her kit, but also her looks. Because, yeah, I think we have a lot of amazing units that kind of fulfill these like uh, hit hard, hit fast styles. But let me know what you guys think, especially those of you that play those kind of um, play styles. And then those of you that just like her looks or maybe we're a fan of Laika. How do y'all feel about the new uh, vamp revamp? I, I think overall the best thing I like is the voice and then that robotic kind of voiceover. But yeah. I think I probably will skip this guy, so um, that's that. All right, let's jump to the uh, special change, Inos. All right, got the second video loaded up. Let's take a look. Now that oh. I'm here, sorry, a little loud. Let me know the volume is. Okay, voice sounds good too. About a little test run. You got cleaned out. You mad? All right, guys. Looks wise, looks pretty good. Um. I never really used Inos too much, the base form 1.0, but yeah, I think I think the special change looks pretty good. I think her S3 animation though looks a little awkward with the way she jumps and the way she's pointing the gun and then where it lands on the skills. But yeah, I think looks wise for the splash art looks cool. A lifetime ago, Inos left behind what remained of her physical body to begin anew with the name Sonia. After Sonia goes missing following an attack from another hacker. Whoa. But she has vigilante group begins looking for ways to save <laughs> her. As a grandmother, as a godmother. They discover that Sonia had saved a back. Yeah, honestly, I like I like the look. Could replace her if such an event were to occur. However, I have a feeling some people are going to like her original Sonia, form better though. Vigilantes decide to search for her. So they merge her discarded body with Sonia's data, thereby reactivating an Inos who had been dormant I knows. for a long time. Inos. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Let's take out the skills pause. We'll take it from here. Thank you, Mr. GM says. So we have her. Um, I kind of understood. I, I looked at her kit before jumping into this, the base form. She had like speed up, attack up, uh, some like debuff cleanses, things like that. So before we even look at the special change, kind of screamed like a little bit more of an offensive Soul Weaver. Let's see what they're actually changing on her kit here. Her skill three here, right? The one that does attack up and speed. Oh, it also heals. Um... Let's see how much it actually heals for if they show in the video. But she throws a cube, and then the amount recovered proportional to the target's max health, and we're going to get cannot trigger a counterattack, which is very important, right, in this day and age. It sucks that every unit's getting this now for those of us that play counter or love to farm Banshee, but I do think it's a necessity with how strong counters can be. And if your Soul Weaver just wants to, like if your Soul Weaver unfortunately has an attack skill that, you know, they want to buff and heal, but it also attacks the opponent. We don't want them instantly getting destroyed just for trying to do their job, you know. So even though it sucks, I guess that's it's pretty necessary to have like a cohesive, uh, well-functioning unit in the current meta. Uh, but yeah, so she'll be getting that on her skill three. That's the specially change skill effect. Uh, let's keep moving on here. I, we can watch the animation super quick. I mentioned the jump looked a little awkward. Let me see this again. And increases attack and speed for two turns. Amount recovered increases I, the, It looks cool, but yeah, it looks a little this awkward. Skill cannot trigger a counter attack. Um, but lots of buffs cannot trigger counter attack. Okay, here we go. Let's check out the runes. There it is, guys. As with all all these kind of units that maybe are going to be more offensive, I know a lot of people when I was streaming earlier were like, she needs some speed runes, so she's going to be getting some five additional speed. 
um, as well as some defense and health, right? Always nice for Soldier to have some extra bulk on top of that. So speed, defense, and health runes, always nice. Very good. Just free stats on her specially change. So that's good. She's also going to be getting effectiveness of dark elemental allies. Okay, so kind of like some other special changes that, we, that we've that we gotten in the past. She's going to want to be like, uh, she gives buffs to her fellow dark units. Um, effectiveness by 5%. Okay, that seems pretty mediocre. Uh, Harvest Rune of the start of the first battle gain 245 souls per dark elemental ally. Applies up to 3 units. Okay, that's actually very cool. So you're going to get 5 souls per dark ally up to 3. So I'm assuming that means... Uh, 15 total if you bring a mono dark squad or at least have three dark units total. Um, I wonder if that counts yourself, guys. Usually when they say ally, that will count herself. So you could have three dark units, one light if if we're counting her own self. But yeah, that's 15 souls, which is pretty powerful, honestly. Um, that might set up a lot of other comps. You could do things like uh, Inos plus two dark units or Inos plus one dark unit if she counts herself or just two dark units, period. So 10 souls and then have like an unseen observer from a ranger. Um, things like that, or maybe go for like 40 souls based on how much souls you can build just using skills after the first round. Um, yeah, pretty cool gimmick, I guess. If you guys are okay spamming dark units, that sometimes is the trade-off. Uh, you know, having to, for having to force yourself to use multiple elements of the same type can be kind of tricky, especially in real-time arena. Uh, but next up, we have the guard rune at the start of the first battle. Has a 100% chance to increase effect resist of the caster for two turns. And I'm assuming that's going to give her the effect resist buff, which I believe is 50% total. Very nice. I think so. That's good for Soul Weavers. That'll help with her gearing. Okay, so pretty cool. Those runes are uh, pretty nice. Besides the effect, this one that seems like whatever five percent total is kind of, kind of meh. But let's see what they're showing us here. She goes, yeah, she gets that ER buff there, guys. Let me see this again. Chance to increase effect resistance of the caster for two turns. They're showing Zeo though, and um, just to be aware, guys, I'm not. This isn't a tips video, but a lot of Zeos now have very high effectiveness. So be careful, even with this fifty ER. If the Zeal wants to debuff you, you're going to need a lot of effect resist, even with that buff, okay? So just be careful. Uh, something you will be need to, needing to be uh, aware of if you're going to run this character. Uh, maneuver support skill 2. At the end of the turn, increase combat of the ally, except for the caster with a high stack by 15%, and it spells one debuff from an ally. Okay. And she's going to get the life rune on top of that, which recovers health of the ally with a high stack, except for the caster by 5%. Okay, that's very low. <laughs> um, but she gets combat readiness, a dispel, debuff, right? 15%. This seems like a pretty weak skill, too. I mean, I wasn't aware of, like, exactly what it did base form, but they're adding a 5% heal on top of that um, for the highest attack ally. And they'll also, you know, get a debuff dispelled and a slight combat readiness special. But, yeah, that doesn't seem too amazing. This effect is applied before dispelling a debuff. Wait, did they even show the heal there, guys? Prosperity room a debuff. Okay, well I saw the dispel, but maybe the heal is so small it didn't even show. Hold on, let me read that again. When maneuver support is activated, which is a skill two, recovers health of the ally with the highest attack. Oh, it's going on a DPS unit here, uh, probably Bryceria. Um, and they're already full health. Okay, got it. Five percent though is kind of um, not amazing, but her skill three has heals as well, so maybe that combined with it maybe could feel okay and then we have the achievement room guys i didn't skip anything right uh no i did sorry let's go back just a tad here to make sure okay so we're getting prosperity rune on the, the skill three we're getting um when using the skill three we have a what is this here uh 20 percent chance to increase duration of the increase attack for dark elms allies to three turns all right also not an amazing rune 20 percent chance is just kind of low um, and then of course it only affects dark elemental allies. Uh, not an amazing rune also by any means, right? Cause we're not even getting like greater attack buff or anything like that. It's just increasing the, the duration to three turns instead of two. Kind of a weak rune at 20% overall. Not the biggest fan of that. So it's whatever. Um, here we go though. The next rune guys, after using enhanced firepower cube, when the caster's at max health, uh, has a 20, a hundred percent chance to acquire two additional souls. Okay. That's kind of cool. With her whole uh, gimmick of adding like 15 souls, right? Maximum if you have dark units. Now she gets an additional two souls as well when using the enhanced firepower cube. So she should be providing a lot of souls potentially to your squad. I like that. I think that's kind of cool. I'm not the big fan. I'm not the biggest fan of like stacking souls. Um, just in general because I think it's very powerful. Um, but yeah, that is a cool mechanic overall. And the trust rune here when using enhanced firepower cube is go three. 
we have a 100% chance to dispel one debuff from Dark Elemental Allies before the skill effect. Okay, now that seems very powerful. The 20% a, a chance to give like an extended one turn is whatever. The other two runes, though, seem pretty nice here. 100% um, chance if they're a dark unit to dispel one debuff before the skill. All right. Hey. And then we also remember, guys, get a recover health and then attack and speed up, plus all the other rune effects on top of that. And now cannot be triggered or cannot trigger a counterattack. So let's watch it once again. The culmination of all these buffs. She jumps around, does a little blast, gives some big buffs to her squad, extra souls if you're dark units. Um, cleansing. Automatic doll that has been okay. After a long time. Players can begin doing I think she's cute, though. I like her looks. That's a nice lobby animation as well. Um, oh, look, she's also alongside Sonya there. Very similar as they are, you know. I think effectively, technically the same person or whatever. But, um, yeah, there you go, guys. Starting March 30th, um, you can get your very own specialty change, Inos. Um, I, overall take, I don't think she's going to be, like, she's going to make a huge splash in the meta. Maybe some players will make her look really good, even at higher levels of RTA. But um, the fact that she's more of, like, you know, we got these dark mono team kind of vibes. You don't have to bring all dark units. But when your last unit that kind of fulfills a similar role was, like, Ahmed... The competition is really fierce for this kind of offensive Soul Weaver. So um, maybe hold off, guys, if you're not really needing someone like this yet. Um, hold off on investing a lot of runes and things like that, catalysts, uh, until you know you need her. Otherwise, if you guys like the new look, guys, remember, it is a video game. So play her if she looks fun and enjoy, right? All right. Overall, please let me know what you think about both Laika and Inos. I'm not the biggest fan either, just gameplay-wise. Um, but I hope you guys are, and I'm happy for y'all if you are excited for this content. I'm waiting for some other content, but we'll see soon, boys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.